Good evening. My name is Christiana Nelson, and today I will be performing an original speech about underage drinking and driving. Drinking and driving is a serious problem. In our country, every 53 minutes on average, someone is killed in a drunk driving crash. Every 90 seconds, someone is injured because of this entirely preventable crime. To compound an already serious issue, even worse than drinking and driving, is drinking and driving by those under age. Nearly one million teens drove while under the influence of alcohol in 2011. The most fundamental problem with drunk driving amongst teens is the risk of getting into a fatal crash. The CDC reports that in 2010, one in five teens who were in fatal crashes had alcohol in their system. Researchers report that underage drinking has costs of $2 billion annually, along with medical care and criminal justice costs. Underage drinkers who have a car accident are responsible for their own vehicles involved in the crash, along with other damaged property. People who are underage and drink have worse outcomes while driving than a person who's of age drink and happens to be driving. This is because underage drink underage drinkers drive I mean underage drinkers' bodies are still maturing. Since they're still maturing, the alcohol affects their bodies differently. Consider this. Every year as prom approaches, parents and schools become more worried about the problem of teen drinking and driving. It's almost a rite of passage for some to drink while at prom. This mindset needs to be changed. 17-year-old Elizabeth Jane Modelewski was 13 times over the legal alcohol limit when she was in a car accident that took her life last summer. Now, the people who let her get behind the wheel are facing criminal charges, including reckless endangerment. Elizabeth left a party with four male friends in Gladstonebury, Connecticut on July 14, 2013. They took turns driving an SUV until everyone, except for her, had been dropped off. None of Elizabeth's pals, who were seemingly sober enough to drive themselves home, offered her a ride. So she took the wheel, but only made it a half a mile before driving off of the road into a tree. Authorities are investigating what exactly went down before the tragic crash and whether or not anyone else can be blamed. Although it's admittedly difficult to convince any intoxicated person to put their keys down, it's always your responsibility to try or offer to pay for their cab. I believe we need to do something so we don't have another tragedy like the loss of Elizabeth Jane Modelewski. And while it may be difficult to make any charges stick, this story reminds us of an important cliche phrase that's only cliche because it's true. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. Thank you.